Well, Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino joins us now to continue this conversation. Matt, you have another look at the snowpack angle here, right? Yeah, we're going to look into the future a little bit. And to do that, to, as I watched this series go on, I was reminded of a study that was done at Portland State University at the Climate Science Research Lab, which is run by Dr. Paul Loikith. It was published in the Geophysical uh, Research Letters back in 2019, so about five years ago. But it's a very robust study, and it points to the decrease and the number of wet days in the Cascades and all the mountain ranges of the northwest into Idaho and up in the northern Washington that are rain versus snow. So that's what they talk about in this in this study. And I'm going to kind of dig into this a little bit, too. It's, it's a little bit dense. It's very academic, but I think it, it, we can glean some really good information out of this. What this shows, every single dot on the map shows what the uh, percentage is of days that where you get precipitation in the in the cold season from November through March that are snow versus rain and on Mount Hood that averages out to about right now 60 to 70 percent of our winter days November through March we get snow not rain so what they looked at what the researchers looked at Dr. Ariel Catalano was the lead researcher on this was how many of the what's the change in that going to be going through the century how many days are suddenly going to become rainy days versus snowy days and that's critical as to how much snow we actually get and if you look at this graph again same type of graph but they looked at thresholds okay when do we start seeing less than half of our days become snowy and then rainy and when do 25 percent of them that's all we're getting our snowy days or 25 percent of our wet days in the rainy season and for Mount Hood that threshold is reached around 2070 2071 they broke it down by decade and they did some very very uh, thorough and robust research into this they looked at biases in the models and the reason they did this is because the climate models that we use the general circulation models that we use to forecast how the weather and the climate will change they're not very good at resolving the terrain and the topography of the Northwest, which is very complicated. So they took this down to a site by site scale to look at, OK, what's the change at every single site that they could look at where we get reliable snowfall data? One of the things about this that was robust and again, it shows some pretty dramatic changes. Now I'm going to show you our snowpack this winter and as Kale mentioned, this is an El Nino winter, so we expect to get lower than normal snowfall. We got up to about average on the 15th of January. Then we had all that wet weather dropped to 73% of average. We picked up a bit. The percentage on Mount Hood has stayed about the same up in northern Washington on Mount Baker. It's not been a good year. It just hasn't. 58% back on the 15th of January. Then they saw market declines. They're about 42% of average right now. So again, this is an El Nino winter. We don't necessarily expect to get a lot of snow in the Cascades in a winter like that. this, and that's been true to form. So some, some summaries for you on this uh, study that I've been referencing here. Northwest snowpack in a warming climate climate. We are seeing the Northwest Mountain see uh, snowfall frequency decline. That means more rainy days, fewer snowy days. And again, the thresholds are what's important. The strongest declines were in the first half of the century, and then those declines slowed down. The strongest declines also in the Cascades and in low elevations. No surprise there for low elevation and really no surprise for the Cascades because we still have more of a maritime climate on the west side of the Cascades. East side of the Cascades, we saw declines but not as much. Same thing in the mountains of Idaho. And the bottom line is mitigation matters because they looked at a couple of different scenarios of greenhouse gas emissions. If we continue on the path we are and don't do a lot of mitigation, then we cross those thresholds where we get more rainy days, fewer snowy days a lot quicker. And if we have more robust mitigation, meaning that we continue to decrease the amount of greenhouse gases we're putting in the atmosphere, then we start to see that's the reason why we see those decreases, uh, those declines slow down in the latter half of the century. So again, Evan, I know this is fairly dense and academic, but it was really good information, really good research done at Portland State uh, by the Climate Science Research Group there. Yeah, Matt, so the number of days with precipitation, that stays about the same. It's just what type of precipitation we're seeing, right? That's exactly what they're trying to get at because we do see, you know, the average precipitation may not change that much, but how much of it is snow? And that's key, as Kale has been telling us all week, because that speaks to how much water we're saving in our reservoirs, what our soil moisture is like. That plays into the fire weather forecast, also plays into the salmon situation too, because it's not for, for fish. It's not just the amount of water that's in the 
streams, it's the temperature of that water. So if we get a lot of rain, it's not as cold as snow melt. The water warms, fish don't like that. So there's a lot that plays into this, but it was some pretty robust research done at Portland State by the, the researchers there showing how these thresholds are likely going to be met. And they did it on a very regional, very localized level, which we don't see a lot of. And, and that's where a lot of the research in climate change is going to go to break it down yep. from the big scale down to smaller scale where we can, you know, have better information as to how we can manage those resources. Yeah, great. Thank you, Matt. And no. while we're talking about snow, let's take the